It's like a nightmare that won't end. The world has watched in horror as the catastrophe in Japan escalates by the day. From bad to worse to absolutely unbelievable. And it's not over yet. All this week, as the threat of full-scale nuclear disaster loomed over Tokyo, Liz Hayes has been there. Thanks, Alison. Well, first came that monster earthquake, one of the most powerful ever recorded. Then the deadly tsunami, sweeping away entire towns and with them, thousands of lives. And just when you thought this disaster couldn't get any worse, it did. For the past week here, we, along with the people of Japan, have been living under the threat of a nuclear meltdown as authorities battle to contain the country's deteriorating reactors. Of all the miseries visited upon this country in recent days, this would have to be one of the most terrifying. It started like this. An explosion at one of six nuclear reactors at the Fukushima power plant, 240 kilometres north of Tokyo. It would mark the beginning of a new and terrifying crisis, threatening the health of millions of people. We're in a very, very dangerous situation where you can have a whole array of reactors going down one after the other. Philip White from Japan Citizens Nuclear Information Centre has been closely watching this drama unfold. In terms of disasters, this is potentially one of the greatest, is that right? In terms of the amount of radioactivity involved, it would be the greatest, I believe. In terms of how far it gets, that remains to be seen. The Fukushima power plant's essential cooling systems were knocked out by the tsunami. Several explosions and fires followed, damaging all six reactors. Experts fear there's been a partial or full meltdown of the nuclear fuel rods. Dangerous levels of radiation have already leaked out. More than 200,000 people in the area have been forced to flee their homes. It was a mass exodus yesterday and I completely understand that everyone has to do what's right for them and there's no right answer. So many, many foreigners have left? A absolutely. Australian Dee Green has been living in Japan for the past 14 years. She's staying for now, but is expecting some tough times ahead. We've been told to expect rolling blackouts twice a day. So we're prepared. We've got the bathtub filled up. We've got the washing machine filled up. We've got pots of water everywhere. We've stocked up with food. The shelves are Sh oh, empty. Oh, shelves are empty. There's nothing in our 7-Eleven, nothing at the supermarket. Um, you can still buy certain things. There's plenty of beer and chips. <laughs> but, but, you know, you bread... you're okay. Then we're, we're fine, you know, but the bread and milk situation is bad. Fuel? Fuel, no, there's no fuel. Our local gas, uh, gas stand is closed. What will make you decide to go? Oh gosh, maybe another M6 like last night. I was, I was so fine, but then that came last night. Um, What's an M6? That was a magnitude six last night, sorry. Another quake. Another quake. But it's what's up here in the air that worries the people of Tokyo most. This city is home to 12 million people, and when you take in the surrounding districts, 35 million people. Now that's nearly a third of Japan's population, all now vulnerable to nuclear radiation. As helicopters desperately drop water to cool down the reactors, Japan has enforced a 20 kilometer no-go zone. But in an extraordinary, and somewhat embarrassing move for Japan, the US and now Australia, Britain, Germany and Korea have told its citizens to keep an 80 kilometre distance. And France has simply told its people to leave. Can you understand why people are leaving? I can understand why people are leaving. I know that the French embassy has actually been evacuating people. Well, while the Japanese government says we are not extending the evacuation zone. The French government is taking 3,000, taking all their population out. 
With every breath of air the people of Tokyo take in, so too does this rather anonymous looking silver stack, a monitor perched on the rooftop of the Institute of Public Health. This is quite a nerve centre and it is here that they take daily readings of radiation levels. In fact, they do it on an hourly basis and those levels are already showing that their radiation is 20 times higher than normal. That's a good reason for the people of Tokyo to be concerned. Inside, staff collate the data and pass on the information to government authorities. So it was 20 times higher than normal. Right. Okay. Doesn't that worry you? No. It is a reading that does worry many on the streets, though. Streets that no longer feature their trademark neon signs and, by Tokyo standards, are almost deserted. How concerned are you about the radiation leaks? Uh, I'm very afraid in this case uh, uh, because. Uh, this is like Chernobyl. It's like Chernobyl? Yes. People are very scared about the radiation. I wear the mask not only because I'm full of noses, but because I'm afraid of the exposure to radiation. That's why the people around here wear the masks. So they're wearing masks not just for hay fever, but for radiation? Of course, and I have spare masks if you want. I think it's better for you to wear you, you the mask if you want. You, you think I should wear one? I think so. Do you think everyone should be wearing one? I think so. Normally, you would have to push aside people to get through here, would you? <laughs> For businesswoman Yukiko Oi, Tokyo is home. But she's considering leaving because, like so many people in Japan, her memories of nuclear radiation are alarming. What frightens you most about the radiation? Well, long time ago, oh, Japan was uh, uh, exposed to the, the nuclear bombs, and we know how disastrous it's going to be if you're exposed to the radiation. Japan has not forgotten the last time it had to deal with the horrors of radiation when nuclear bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II. And they're all too aware of the symptoms exposure to radiation can bring. Vomiting and diarrhea, the loss of hair and teeth. Greater exposure can damage skin, internal organs, and the digestive system. It can also cause sterility and possible birth defects and cancer. What is the worst case scenario? Well, the worst case scenario is that all six of the current reactors there, every one of them has a load, load of fuel in the reactor. Everyone has several loads of spent fuel in their spent fuel pools. All of that could go up. If that went up, what would that mean for the people of Japan? Up to 50 kilometres for a uranium fuel reactor, around the reactor you could have half the population dying of acute radiation sickness. It seems like your lives here in Japan have gone from being very good to being very vulnerable. Right. It's like that we are, let's so say, they're reversing the clock or the backward. In your heart, how do you feel about what's happening to your country right now? Well, it's really sad and and if I think about people who are suffering in disaster area, and I really feel sad. The challenge ahead is one that seems overwhelming. On a nuclear crisis measurement, some authorities put Fukushima at level six. Chernobyl was level seven. Yukiko says all she can do is pray for the people who've lost so much and for a country now in deep despair. Are you confident that you and your family will be able to get back to the life you had? Japanese people are very uh, tough and also we are the country that recovered from the disaster after, the, after World War II, so I think we can get through the difficult times, but it may take a while. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. 
To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.